True NAS Scale's powerful app functionality allows you to extend and enhance scale beyond local storage. In this video, we'll walk you through setting up a storage node on TrueNAS Scale. There are a few prerequisites you need to complete before installing the storage app on Scale. First, make sure your Scale installation is up to date for the best performance and reliability. Second, to participate as a node in the storage network, you need to create port forwards through your router to your TrueNAS Scale system on port 2988 for both TCP and UDP, and have a publicly resolvable hostname on the internet pointing to your router's public IP address. Each network is different, so consult your router's documentation on how to pass ports through to internal systems and if your router supports dynamic DNS. And third, to properly set up storage, you need a storage wallet. Creating a wallet can be done using a variety of different apps, and there are special considerations for how to protect and manage your wallet that are outside the scope of this video. Please check the video description below for links on how to create a wallet if you don't already have one. Let's get started. Our first stop is to generate an authentication token for storage. Open up your browser of choice and head over to www.storage.io slash host dash a dash node. Enter in an email address you'd like to use, solve the recapture puzzle, and click continue. In the white box below is your storage auth token. Copy the token to a safe place, we'll need it in a bit. All right, let's get the storage app installed on TrueNAS Scale. Head over to your TrueNAS Scale UI and log in with the username and password. Once logged in, head over to the left and click Storage. We're going to create two dedicated data sets for a fresh new storage installation. On the right side of the screen, locate the three ellipses next to your system data set and select Add Data Set. We're going to name our new data set Storage-Node. And then we'll scroll down to the bottom and click Save. All of the defaults are fine for us here. Once the new data set is built, you should see it listed. Next, we'll create two new data sets under our new Storage Node data set. On the right side of the screen, locate the three ellipses next to the newly created storage node dataset and select Add Dataset. We'll name this dataset Config and click Save. Now let's create our last dataset. Again, locate the three ellipses next to the newly created storage node dataset and select Add Dataset. We'll name this dataset Identity and click Save. If all is well, you should now see a primary dataset named Storage Node and two nested datasets, one named Config and the other Identity. Great, we're all done with the storage, let's get the Storage app installed. Head over to Apps on the left, and then click Available Applications. In the list below, find the Storage app and click the Install button. We need to give our Storage app a name, we'll name our Storage Node and click Next. On the next screen, our first stop is to enter in our storage wallet address. Again, if you don't have a wallet already set up, check the description of this video for more information on how to create a wallet. Now we'll enter in the auth token we previously created on the storage website. And enter the email address we used when we created the storage auth token. In the storage domain field, enter in your public DNS name for your network. If you're using dynamic DNS, enter that name here as well. No further changes are needed on this page, so navigate down and click Next. Now we need to decide in gigabytes how much local storage we'll be dedicating to our storage node. We'll provide a full terabyte of storage for our storage node. You can share more or less depending on your storage environment. Next, check Enable Custom Host Path for Storage Configuration Volume, and then navigate to the newly created config dataset we previously created a few steps back. Next, we'll check the Enable Custom Host Path for Storage Identity Volume, and then navigate to the identity dataset we created moments ago. There's nothing more to do here, so we'll navigate down and click Next. On the Networking Config page, we won't be making any changes, so navigate down and click Next. On the Advanced DNS Settings page, we won't be making any changes, so navigate down and click Next. On the Resource Limits page, we won't be making any changes either, so navigate down and click Next. Our last stop is the Confirmation page, where we see a summary of all the changes we previously configured. Let's go ahead and click Save and kick off the installation. During the process, your TrueNAS Scale system will download the app and begin the installation. We can check on the app's deployment status by navigating over to Installed Applications at the top. Keep in mind, the time it takes to deploy will depend on a number of factors, including the hardware you're running TrueNAS Scale on and your network connection, so be patient and let it complete. All right, now that our storage app is installed and running, let's check on its progress. Navigate down to the Storage App Card and click Web Portal. This is your Storage Node Dashboard. As you can see, our node is online and everything looks healthy. The dashboard provides information about the amount of network data that's passed through your node, storage utilization, connections to different global storage data centers, and your current payout information. Congratulations, you've successfully installed a storage node on TrueNAS Scale. 
This is a great time to mention we have a ton of helpful documentation and resources to help you get the most out of TrueNAS Scale, and our fantastic community is full of great people who are willing to help answer any questions you might have. We highly recommend you check out our docs, bookmark them, and join the community. Thank you for watching.